Hello, in this video, I will be talking about how to define a coil in EMS for inventor. And in this process, we will also look at how to properly create a coil in your CAT system. What I have here is a coil and then I have two steel plates which are at different distances from the coil. The objective of this simulation is to compute the forces acting on the top plate as well as the bottom plate when you put some current in the coil. So what really happens? When I put some current in the coil, the coil acts as an electromagnet. Therefore, it will attract any ferromagnetic material in its vicinity. For example, the top and the bottom steel plates. And the objective is to find out with what force is the coil attracting these plates. But before we get to that, we need to see how coils are defined in EMS. I'm going to go to the EMS feature manager. And before that, let me hide the air geometry. In the EMS feature manager, we have a section for defining coils. So when I right click and say coils, I have two types of coils. If I have a solid coil and a wound coil, a wound coil is one that is very similar to what we have in this model where we take copper, a particular wire gauge of copper and wind it to make a coil. So let's use the wound coil. Now in the wound coil, we have to define the components that comprise the coil so that we can define. Then we also have to select a cross-sectional phase to define the entry and the exit ports. Now we don't have that in the coil. So let's see how that can be accomplished in Inventor. Now, if once you define a coil, it's not just sufficient to have coil as one body. Why? Because in EMS, we need a cross-sectional phase. To do that, it's very easy. We can edit the coil and we will have to split the coil along this plane. So we use the split command and then uh, we split the coil along this plane. So what really happens is the coil gets separated into two bodies and as a result, we will get a cross-section phase. See that what I'm highlighting, which can be used to define a coil in Inventor. Now we have created, we'll return back to the main geometry. Let's go back to the EMS feature manager. Here we have to update the study because once we update the study, will make the study will make sure that the coil currently has two different bodies. Now I can go to the coil, define wound coil. I can select the two different bodies that comprise the coil. And for the entry port, I have to select the cross-sectional phase. So I select the cross-sectional phase that is going to be used to define the coil. The exit port is the same as the entry port because the coil is a circular loop. And here is where we specify how many turns we would need. Maybe this coil has 85 turns and uh, then it carries a current of 0.5 amperes. And then we say, okay, this completes the definition of the coil. Now we will apply materials to the other components, the steel at the top and the bottom. I say apply materials and then I click the nonlinear magnetic materials and choose steel 1008. To the air, we will apply the air material and then finally to the coil, we are going to from the conductor materials, we will apply copper and then we apply and close. So we have applied the materials to the various components. The next thing we will have to do is we will have to request the program to compute the forces acting on the top steel plate as well as the force acting on the bottom steel plate. So once the solution has been completed, we will take a look at the various forces that are acting on these steel plates. Now, uh, to do this, I'm going to also show you what is called as a mesh control. So each of these coils have a certain particular thickness, which is 0.4 inch. 
and the idea of mesh controls is really to specify a particular size uh, so that we can get more elements along the thickness of the coin. Now, uh, because it is 0.4 inch, I'm going to do 0 0.02 inch as the element size and say, okay. Now I can go ahead, run the simulation. And once the solving is complete, we'll come back and take a look at the results. Now the solution has been completed and we can now take a look at the results. Now let me turn back the visibility of the air and then I can take a look at the magnetic flux density in the model. We'll have to take a section view so that we can look inside the model. Now this is the magnetic flux density in the model as you can see. I can also make this a vector plot which will help us to understand the direction of the flux going out from the coil. So you can see how the flux distribution happens in the model. Finally, we will take a look at the result table where we can find out what are the forces acting on the top and the bottom plate. Now the virtual work one is the force acting on the top plate and you can see the value of the force. It's, it's very negligible because we have put very small amount of current in the coil. Um, nevertheless, the top plate is at a higher distance from the coil and hence it has a, a smaller value of the force, uh, at least one order of magnitude smaller compared to the bottom plate, which is at a slightly smaller distance from the coil. So in this video, we saw how we can create a coil in the CAT system so that we can use that to define a coil in our magnetic study using EMS for inventor. We also saw how we can compute the forces acting on steel plates, which are at the vicinity of an electromagnet. And finally, we saw the results of the magnetic flux density. Thank you for watching this video.